Ba -da -bum -bum. Hello, everybody. Just getting things spun up here. Let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Cool. Hello. Greetings. I'll type it. Welcome to Sunday's Art Thingy. I guess that's that's my official title, Sunday's Art Thingy. I, uh, I've been absent a few weeks. Uh, there's a lot going on right now, so I apologize. Hopefully, I can get back on a regular schedule. Actually traveled for the first time in like 18 months. Uh, that was cool, <laughs> but very unusual. Greetings, everyone, hello. I'm gonna just sit here uh, idly waiting for a few more minutes and make sure everything is up and running. Can you folks hear some uh, relatively subtle music in the background? Is that all working? I'm actually playing it through YouTube music, which I don't normally do. See if that's working. Pretty quiet on the music side, but that's all right. Don't want to get too loud. You never know exactly how loud some of this music's going to get. Some of these long play musics. So, long play musics. I'm going to have some. It's very quiet. I can turn up a little bit. Let's see if it gets too loud. Let me know because I'll. I can be louder, as everyone probably has no doubt. However, sometimes when I'm doing the arts, uh, I start mumbling a bit because I'm, my brain is occupied by uh, what I'm doing, especially if it's more about like designing shapes or uh, new things more than like rendering something. Rendering is in like traditional painting, like rendering form, not hitting a render button. That also doesn't take a lot of, of brain power, but. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, today, uh, I'm gonna start something new. So I know, uh, let's see, the last few sessions we've been um, spending going through machine learning and some AI stuff, and I showed some techniques of like different tools you could use. And I, in one of the sessions, I did do a, um, a painting based on that, but we're gonna kind of do a slightly different thing today. So today, uh, I have a new area of the world, of the world of pilgrimage that I'm fleshing out, and I'm, I'm thinking of a series of three paintings. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, and I'm going to use some of the uh, images I've generated uh, using machine learning tools uh, based on my own art. So these are images where I've uploaded things and then used a variety of tools to manipulate them. And, uh, some of them are the like the clip v vegan stuff as well as um, art breeder, uh, and so I'll kind of explain what um, what the ideas behind some of these images, and um, we'll jump around it. Hey Deidre, thanks. I actually spent a little time configuring my lighting. I still think I need to get another maybe another bright light behind the monitor or something, but I uh, it's so hot here, I ha I have to like close all the curtains, and then I'm in like complete darkness so but I think it's better than it was <laughs> it's not quite so uh, brown um, uh, yes so um, this will be the start of a whole new thing and what we're gonna do today is uh, I'm gonna use bl blender in part uh, just because it's been a while since I've used it kind of rough some shapes in and then some ZBrush stuff and that's probably about as far as we'll get today but um, where where this is destined for is Unreal 5. So maybe as early as next week's session will be in Unreal 5. And we're gonna use, we'll probably use Unreal 5 mainly as a concept tool, right? Because I do wanna still get back to painting these images, but since we're in there, we might, you know, make a little space we can kind of walk through in first person because it kind of just happens as you're working in Unreal. But I wanna explore Unreal 5 a bit, which I haven't used much. Um, and, you know, again, with an eye towards generating concept images or things like that versus like a full game or something, uh, which would take a lot of time. So uh, where are we at with these? So um, if you remember 
the world of pilgrimage, you know, uh, we, we've kind of gone over a lot of those various things. And I think last time I painted, uh, well not last time, but the last time I was working on pilgrimage, I painted this image. And, and this was for the sort of priest-like character called the Broken, which is kind of a different area that we're not really working on today. But I did put it up because I did use that image as a basis for these two. These two images like, well, that's interesting. How about a gradient? Anyone want a gradient? Um, these two images, or three images, this one, and this one, and this one. Um, and so these are um, me using my art as a basis, but then trying to get the machine learning tools to turn it into something else. So um, the idea behind all these images is that there is a field or a special place within this world where the oracles are grown out of the ground. And when the oracle is matured, to a certain t a certain point, it is harvested from the ground and taken back to another location for divination. And uh, I thought of this idea when um, I was uh, fucking around. Sorry, when I was experimenting, when, <laughs> when I was experimenting with uh, tools and came up with an image like this, it kind of looked like a weird face to me. And then I started imagining, well, what if we had like you know, little priest type characters like from Pilgrimage all hanging out kind of around here, right? And they were approaching this sort of area and and um, this thing is ready for harvest. So they're gonna like cut it down or extract it. We'll see where that goes. We're kind of keeping it loose right now. And then, uh, and then th what happens with it will be explored in other two paintings. But I don't wanna get too far ahead of ourselves because for me, uh, for this sort of non sort of client-based, non-work-based stuff. I like to be very loose and just see what happens so the idea could completely change, right? Um, but that's the basic idea. And what I wanted to do once I found this image, I, I worked on it a bit and then used some more machine learning stuff. And I'll get a little closer so you can see these. And I wanted to bring, um, these are a couple other experiments. You know, none of these are exactly right, but they all have elements that I like. So um, I, I tried to make this one look more, um, like try to, to sneak some more facial shapes in there. And these are kind of small, and I think I'll probably make the overall thing kind of the face, but um, some of these textures I like, and I wanted to give it a little bit more sense of uh, a tree or vine kind of grown. So this one is kind of like really far in that direction um, where the whole landscape's kind of twisted around these, these uh, root-like shapes. Um, and None of these are quite right, right? Like, but I'm just going to use these as a starting point. They're all images I'm going to look at. Um, and then I liked this sort of atmosphere potentially for the, uh, sorry, this one here is what I'm talking about. This sort of atmosphere perhaps for the whole landscape. And I also liked the roots, or as my grandmother would say, ruts. These roots that it kind of extend through here. And um, also I kind of like these shapes here. I don't know, you know, I'm not sure exactly how this, this one fits in, but I like these shapes. And today I'll be working on the oracle itself, this sort of big thingy here. Um, but I will need to also design the, the cast of priests that will harvest it. And so uh, just to get some stuff flowing in the back of my mind, that's what, that's what, um, that's what these characters might be. And so these are uh, derivations of the painting I showed you earlier, just to see how it might might change. And I, um, I kind of <laughs> this one is very like crustacean looking here, right? With these sort of shapes, and um, I like the chaos going on in these. Obviously, they need to be like refined for an actual readable character. But I like uh, I like that there's a little face showing up in here, and maybe one in here. This one is kind of uh, I kind of kept the blind face that I had created. Uh, I like. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot of energy I like in these, and this one is a little bit more. Um, I know this one reminds me of an old Baba Yaga or something, uh, you know. And I, I kind of like these shapes here, which look kind of like a harvest basket to me, you know. Which is an interesting thing to maybe allude to without being too specific, since this is a, this is going to be a harvest, right? So, uh, those are just some of the things that are in the back of my head. Um, and yeah, again, this was kind of based on, a little loosely based on this painting that I had done, right? Okay, so, but, and, and yeah, we could just like paint on these in Photoshop and develop them thing, but I'm always interested in ex experimenting how ideas transform um, in ways when you take them through different tools. 
So we're gonna use Blender to start with today, all right? And um, I set up the scene initially, and um, here we are. And so all I did as a setup was just make sure that my scale is right. So these are, these are you know, human, if you will. Human scale is sort of like pre-scale down here. And this is just like, oh yeah, the, um, the Oracle is a sphere currently, it's about like this. And this terrain I created um, pretty quickly um, in, um, and it's just a starting point, right? It'll change, but I created this terrain in uh, Gaia, but I didn't want to go through that in the stream because it's just, uh, it's kind of a whole separate thing. And it's just, it's not really important. I'm gonna take, you know, we're gonna use Blender to kind of rough in some ideas and not be too precious with them. So I'm not really gonna sculpt a whole lot because I, I don't really care for Blender sculpting tools so much, but I do really like it as a program overall. And we're gonna use a set of other tools to kind of like knock in some of this form and then we'll take it to ZBrush and develop it a little further um, before going into Unreal. So that's the plan. Does, it, does anyone have any questions before I kind of, I mean, you can of course shout them out anytime, but if you have any questions about the process or anything else, let me know. As always, you can ask questions throughout the stream constantly. Ask me anything, AMA, yo, all right. Um, I do have, kind of parked over on the side, I do have um, I do have my mood board here, which is just the pieces I'm looking at, this. And I could try and put it in here, but I think I might get in the way a little bit. Well, let's, let's try it. All right. Oh, and notice uh, I did write, uh, when the three moons are in agreement, a matured oracle is harvested for divination. When I was thinking of the idea, that's the sentence that popped to my mind. So without any planning or thought, I just wrote that sentence down and um, just kind of kept it there as future future fuel for whatever the hell is going to happen. So we're going to move this, we'll just do it this way, how about that, how about that, do I have this set to be always on top? I do, good, all right, put it here, that'll probably be fine, I might need to move it when I'm looking at some things, we'll see. Um, the other reason why uh, I'm using Blender is I've just recently switched some of my Blender workflow and I'm trying to use everything with a tablet and Blender is a great program and hey, it's free, not the best with a tablet in some regards. So um, I might I might be fumbling a little bit, we'll see. There's my caveats out of the way. All right, um, so uh, one thing I wanna do for this is use a set of tools, um, a set of add-ons called the Quick Tools. Um, which you can get off Gumroad, and there's a few of them. And I like these tools um, because they're really quick, just kind of like knock out some shapes. So our basic approach is gonna be use kind of primitive, chunky shapes and kind of revoxelize them into sloppy ass mesh as, as our process. So I'm gonna get started, but feel free to go, what are you doing? Um, all right, so let's just, oh, all things just, you know, it's hard to start, right? It's hard to do the beginning. So I'm just gonna get this a little closer. Um, yeah, we're focused just on, on this, but I have the train there just so I have some, some context in mind. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and grab some of this. Uh, so here's another thing. So um, the proportional editing is really important, but uh, when you're in Blender, you don't really have a middle mouse scroll that works reliably with the tablet. So you can use page up and down. Huh, well, look at that. I've just gotten a notification from Xbox. Thanks, hey, go away. I didn't even know my overlay was on. All right, sorry. Back, back to Artin. Uh, so yeah, this is really primitive, but you can use page up, page down for any sort of mouse scroll functions if you're not using a mouse in Blender. And you know, the goal is to not be precise on this. Um, uh, do I not care? Well. I probably wouldn't, one of the reasons, a couple, that's a great question. So the question is, do I not care about, care for Blender sculpting tools because of the limitations in very high poly workflow? That is certainly one of them. Um, uh, I think, I mean, a couple of things, you know, for free, they're amazing tools. Like, I mean, Blender is amazing in general is my opinion, um, and those tools are great uh, for being free. However, um, it, there are several performance issues with Blender when you start throwing around a lot of polys. And since my goal is not to make a clean model here, but my goal is to make um, concept mesh, I'm not, I don't really want to think about that, right? And Blender gets a little slow. Um, and the other thing is, I don't, I just don't feel the brush feel is 
is the same on Blender as it is a ZBrush. And as annoying as ZBrush's UX can be, um, its brush fill is amazing, and, and I just don't feel like Blender's is close. Now, you know, feel free to, to have your own, <laughs> everyone can have their own opinion on it. I don't think there's a right or wrong. That's just kind of like how I feel. So, but one of the reasons I also don't want to go right into sculpting is I'm trying to, uh, I'm just trying to experiment with other workflows. And also I find that sometimes if I go right into sculpting when I have a lot of control, you know, I kind of, I'm tempted to go to the dark side of detail first. Where is if I'm using something that's like a little kludgy, sometimes I won't even let myself use the tablet, um, I will um, not do that. So, for example, um, we're using Quick Shape here. And so Quick Shape has a lot of different things. I just turned on Quick Shape, but fundamentally it's a draw a, uh, you can sort of see it's embedded in there, draw a shape and you can keep like drawing shapes and they can be separate right or you can kind of merge them if you hold down the shift key well i think it's a shift key it's been a while since i've used this control cuts them out well it should i don't know what is going on hey how about i just make up stuff that isn't true there you go um i haven't used this version uh with blender it seems to be laggy it might be because i'm using an alternate navigation method in blender uh, which is more of a maya style workflow which might throw this tool off a bit, so we'll find out. But what this tool is really good for is literally just drop in shapes. So one of the things you can do is if you see down here, I can hit Control Shift W and draw on the surface. So now if I just want to kind of like draw out some of these shapes, I'm just drawing this. Now I'm not even like, um, it normally does not take this long, so I don't know what's going on with this. Uh, again, I just recently updated and you see, it, but it's a little, it's a little funky. But you see it's primitive mesh, right? And that's okay. Um, we're not, I don't, not worried, worried about detail now. So what I'm trying to do is just maybe get some resemblance of these undulations on the surface. And I wish it was a little faster, which it normally is. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Getting back to speed. Um, so uh, the, the fundamental flow is just for me to quickly do this. Now I'm gonna try a quick curve in a minute because I think quick curve might not have these speed problems. Um, but this tool is really cool because you can align to different things. You can see I'm aligning on surface. You can align to faces or quick depths. You can set beveling. You can you can change, you know, I'm using a lasso, but you can use uh, non-lasso based tools. Um, they have like circles and squares and such. You can also um, kind of do quick Boolean shapes. And this mesh that it's generating is not is not clean, but you can see it's, it's very, normally very quick to just go in here and kind of quickly create some shapes. The idea is we're just trying to get some junk on the screen. And yeah, ZBrush uh, currently, you know, they've sort of added some mesh extraction, uh, extract, not mesh extractor. They've added some new tools like the balloon, mesh balloon and other things that do similar type of stuff. Um, one of the things I like to do when I'm doing this workflow is to kind of select all of these things. And um, I'm actually gonna select this guy and I'm gonna hit Control J to join them. And then I'm gonna use a function here where I'm gonna voxel remesh this. And so I'm kind of setting like the resolution. And then I have a smooth function, right? So if I wanna smooth this, I can kind of go in here and do this. Now, you might ask, why did you smooth that? Because <laughs> you're losing a lot of that detail. That's fine, right? It's just a starting point. Um, but that workflow in general is really good. So let me show you another one. This is quick shape. Um, if I go to quick curve, quick curve is a little different, right? We're kind of drawing curves in a similar sort of thing. and I'm going to turn on some pressure, uh, pressure sensitivity, not the pressure of making art. And you can see it tapers a bit. Uh, this is pretty small, so let's make our brush bigger because we're working, the, like this is bigger than human scale. So, but you can see it's very quick to kind of just like knock these things out, right? Um, and what I want to do is uh, I want it actually to not align on the surface, but I'm going to use first click as my depth. So kind of wherever I click, like if I click here, it's going to be kind of where it orients that to. You can kind of see it there. Um, now you see there's a direction towards view. So we're going to actually change that to be, um, I'm going to try and change it to be neutral, which means it's going to be in the middle. So uh, I'm going to put my first click there and you can kind of see it's kind of in the middle there. Um, it's projecting from my view. So uh, why do I care about that? Uh, well, this is another way to like get some real quick surface detail here, right? So I'm not using anything with symmetry. We're just kind of roughing in this little thing, but I can, uh, I think for this one, actually, maybe I do want surface. Let me do surface on this one. And you sort of see here. Now these are these are curves um, at the moment. They're not uh, mesh. Uh, we can turn them into mesh, but what that means is that if you wanted to go and edit these as curves, right? You can go in here 
and pull them around like curves, right? Resample them, whatnot. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of that. I'm gonna use a similar technique where I'm gonna grab these all and I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn them to mesh. Um, there's a bunch of ways to do that. Um, simplest way is just like control A, visual geometry to mesh, uh, merge it into this thing. And you'll see that when I merge it in, they kind of disappear and that's because I still have that sort of smooth set on, on this guy here. So if I change that a little bit, you can kind of see these a little bit more. Like how aggressive do we want this smooth to be? And I could just get rid of the smooth, like we could just stay with voxler meshing. Um, yeah, and you can remesh this at any time. So uh, I'm gonna I'm going to get rid of this, and we're gonna do it again with a little bit better settings for the scale we're working at. Okay, so Control Shift E, and I guess I'll make it a little finer. Let's see how Blender does with this. There you go. And then how smooth do I want it? Let's maybe make it that smooth, right? And this is um, this is again rough. I'm trying to I'm trying to not get like too detailed. That's the basic thing I like to explore is, is this. So what we're going to do is make our curves a little bit bigger now, projecting the surface. And let's see if I can quickly just kind of like sketch out some garbage. I'm most mainly trying to like get over the blank canvas, right? I'm trying to give myself something to kind of react to when I go and sculpt without thinking too much. A little hard when you're talking all the time, <laughs> but that's all right. It's all right. And I think, you know, when I go into ZBrush, I'll probably orient this thing better and mirror it. Then right now I'm just kind of like primarily concerned with the view I'm looking at. So I'm not really worried about it uh, in terms of symmetry or that sort of thing. I mean, I don't really ever need to worry about it in this case because of what I'm doing, but there you go. Beautiful, right? Don't be afraid to make ugly stuff. <laughs> Sometimes it's actually pretty helpful for this early process. So I'm going to grab all these. And, oh, let's see, we're going to, uh, yeah. All right, so I just turned it all into the mesh. I, I kind of, let me undo that for a sec. So I could, um, sorry, I'm just sort of thinking about the best way to do this. I work, normally work a little differently, but basically what I want to do is grab all these things, but this, um, this guy, right? So I'm going to combine those, and then there are a bunch of curves now, I'm going to turn them to mesh. Right, and then I'm going to attach it to this. And the reason why I do that is because that has all those voxel things already going in the background, so I don't need to keep revoxeling it. The cool thing is if I decide I want to go in here and mesh this, you can see if I go into the object mode or rather the edit mode, you can see that all these things are still here separately. So like if I want to move this out a little bit and I have my um, proportional transform on so I could reduce that a bit, but if I wanted these features to be a bit more prominent, I could kind of just go here and do that and then um, you know, when I get out, you can see it's just revoxeled it. So it's kind of a cool way to like, just as another way to experiment, like to throw some really um, simple shapes together and uh, and let this thing do a little bit of the heavy lifting in terms of giving you a continuous mesh, right? Now, if you look at this mesh, it's not gonna be like the most beautiful mesh, right? Cause it's being voxel remeshed. Now you can optimize it later if you really want to. That's not the goal right now. Um, but you certainly can. <laughs> Let's see, is a uh, quick curve a paid add-on? Um, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, quick curve is a, is a paid add-on um, and you can find the quick tools. They're not that expensive. And I, in my opinion, they're highly worth it. There's kind of three of them. Actually, there's four now. So there's quick curve, quick deform, quick shape. And the new one is Quick Texture, which I have not yet experimented with. Um, and the thing I like about them is they're kind of like, they kind of take a little bit of the idea of drawing more than um, sculpting. So if you're just kind of wanting to kind of like get in here and kind of move some things around, you know, it's, it's a, it feels a little bit more like drawing and a little less like sculpting. I, don't, I know, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to describe. I just like them for this sort of iteration. But yeah, <laughs> these are not the sort of like tools for like making a nice character mesh or whatnot, right? So, um, yeah. Hey, Rebecca. Oh man, you know what? I, uh, thank you, I'm glad, I'm glad you find this interesting. I really was thinking today that I was gonna do this step in uh, VR using Medium. And the only reason I didn't is one, I just kind of wanted to like, uh, you know, I like to mix it up a little bit. So I don't just always wanna use the same thing. But the other part was um, I, I kind of felt like um, 
it was so hot here. This is kind of lame. It's so hot here today. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to have a bunch of rubber and plastic strapped to my face. Uh, I mean, you know, to each their own. But in this particular case, it would just be a little too hot. So um, I thought, oh, we'll just not do that. So yeah, and then I also like getting these happy accents. Like you see here, since I didn't like make a proper selection, I missed this poly because I didn't like drop through wireframe mode. So when I did my front selection, didn't grab everything. Um, I got this accidental channel going there, right? I love this sort of accents that can happen and obviously I could go and fix that if I really wanted to. But that's not the goal right now. Okay. It's just kind of like get in here and try different things and see what happens. Uh, so yeah, uh, I forgot I changed this to double click. There we go. Not just, it's alt double click to select a loop for me. And see, I have, I'm not even making clean loop selection. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, how, how hot is it in the UK? This is pretty normal for California, my heat. I'm just, but my, uh, my area here is super warm. Um, it doesn't have the benefits of, uh, of that. Now I could turn off, if I wanted to turn off that and just affect this object, I could just do this. Maybe pull it out a little bit. How are we looking? So now it's like got this weird curve because I pulled it out away from the, the mesh which is being revoxeled. Now you can preview this stuff when you're in um, edit mode. Like I could turn this on. And if I turn that on, you can see like as I move this around, you'll see it start to merge. See that? Uh, it, it does of course slow down and that's not, that's totally understandable. Like that's a beefy thing to preview in real time. So I tend to leave it off, um, but yeah. You could you could preview that in real time if you uh, if you want to. All right, uh, let's see. Two more, yeah, just too hot, too hot. All right, what do I want to do now? Um, let's get some more quick curve going on. Um, I could show you a few other things about quick curve. Well, what do I want to do? You can like we were using round shapes, so we could like switch to square shapes. And we're not instead of doing on surface, let's do. Um, Let's do one that is uh, first click. So the idea there is that wherever I click, it'll it'll orient from there as I drag out, and that's and again it's projecting from my view. And the reason for that is because I want to have some of these things come off the mesh, so it's a little easier than having it being constrained to the surface, right? So we're gonna let's see, we'll use and so depending on how I'm wrapping this, you can kind of see you can get some strange shape. Yeah, we could use curve brushes and in a ZBrush to great effect, but again, we're experimenting with different tools, folks. I think tools, I don't know, my view on tools is they all are worth something and you could just try them out and do different things. So what happens, I'm just gonna do a little rotation and move. You can kind of, you don't have to jump out of this tool to do that. You can kind of do it right as you draw your shapes. Um, yeah, let's do a few more of these. I'm just thinking about like how to bring, again, I'm trying not to get too obsessed with detail here. But I want to kind of bring some of this stuff down into um, this canyon is a not a canyon, but you know, this is kind of a ground, kind of some badlands looking ground here, right? And so it's kind of um, kind of coming up there for that. So let me I'm gonna grab this and we're just gonna uh, turn on proportional editing mode. Uh, I think I'm gonna want some more. Let's get a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, and you can use, um, you know, these are pretty much just standard um, tools, right? So you can use the thick and thin tools here on your spline afterwards. These are just standard splines. So you don't have to, um, you know, be stuck with whatever you've done in the tool. If you want to, you can use any of uh, Blender's standard editing tools for manipulating these guys, which is great because Blender has a lot of good tools for this sort of thing. Yeah, so we can just get, let's just get nutty. Let's, let's just, <laughs> by nutty, I just mean, yeah, let's, uh, it's funny, I spent so many years, um, you know, at the start of my career in the industry, which is now, and I won't say it's 25 years because it makes me sound old, but it's 25 years. And when I started, you know, like 3D uh, was not a concept tool at all, right? It was, and most of my first part of my career was as like a production 3D artist. And, um, the tools were not great for concepting and you really had to work extremely cleanly in the early days of 3D games. 
you know, everything to be watertight, the polygon counts were severely limited, all that sort of stuff. And it really wasn't until like, of course the tools got a little more powerful, but then um, late, much later on, artists started experimenting with those. And I had probably spent a good chunk after that just doing 2D concept work and, and painting and so on. But you know, nowadays, like I love, uh, personally, I just enjoy combining, exploring all the new tools and see how they can kind of feed into like ideation and, and the art process and not just, I won't say I'm bored of drawing, right? Cause I love drawing and painting, but um, you know, it's fun to just push yourself to do different things, I find. All right, so I'm going to attach this. Let's see what happens. Do, do. Oh, wait, so it didn't attach because I haven't converted this to mesh, so let's convert it to mesh. And then we'll just attach it, and let's see what happens. There we go. We've got some cool, weird little goobers there. Let's save this. So yeah, I mean, we, you know, we could sculpt on this if we want. Um, I'm not gonna do that here. I'm gonna resist the urge to do a little sculpting because I want to get into ZBrush for that. Um, but we could use some other tools, right? Um, we could use some box cutter. Um, so box cutter is, a, is a, a really cool tool, but we're not gonna use a box. Let's use, um, why is my thing behaving badly? Uh, let's use this short, this shortcut, which is an in-gone. Actually, I, think I wanted to use, why did it say custom? It was weird. Now it's not working. Uh oh, box cutter just shit the bed. I think box cutter just shit the bed, everyone. Dun 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 dun. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you folks would like me to draw and paint instead, old school. Let me. Blender just took a dump. Let me. Yes. I don't know. I'm sure it was my fault. I don't know what I did, but I'm sure I did something. All right. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, and I do, I do kind of, you know, like I could really have just painted today. <laughs> I was tempted. Um, I try to mix up a bit, but if there's anything in particular, is there anything in particular you want to see me, would like to see me paint or draw? I'm happy to, to listen to any ideas you have. Let's see if, let's see if box cutter will behave today. I haven't, box cutter is normally pretty reliable. I did just update a new version, so it's possible that it's not happy right now. Yeah, that's what you always do, right? Update a new version right before. Yeah, it does not seem to be happy. Like it doesn't seem to, I think what, I think this mesh is just simply too high poly for it that I'm trying to cut, which is totally understandable because I just did a whole lot of crazy um, stuff. The, the normal box cutter workflow is to, <laughs> let me just kill this and try again. The normal box cutter workflow is to work on lower poly stuff, of course, um, and then, you know, res it up afterwards, add your bevels, etc. But I was just seeing what would happen if I did that. Do, do, do. All right, back again. Um, I do plan on doing drawing for this, but I know what you mean. This is sort of like, I'll be sort of like drawing on top of this. Um, uh, so the question is, do I have an opinion on 3D coat as a hand painting tool? Do you mean 3D coat as in um, like to texture an object or do you mean something else? Because 3D coat is a lot of unusual things you can do. Let's do, let's do a long normal. You can also draw along the normal everyone. And why would you want to draw along a normal? Well, the reason why you might want to draw along a normal is because you could do Oh my God, what is going on today? There you go. You can do stuff like that where it comes out of the mesh, right? See how it's coming out there? Uh, it looks like it's offset for a reason I don't quite understand. Um, I don't know if there's an offset that I have put on this thing or not. I don't see an offset. So I'm not sure why it's offset. This is what happens when you update to new versions. You get <laughs> right before you can just stream. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. That one's a little less offset. So the idea here is that I'm just kind of like, what if I wanted stuff to come off the surface, not flow in the direction of the surface? So I can kind of go and, and I'm drawing and it's kind of drawing off the normal. But for some reason, it's not drawing off the normal as accurately as it normally does. I don't know, guys. I don't know. That's all right. We're making these weird little poops, right? And these little poops will work for us. And a hand-painted texture workflow, like texture of a character of an asset. You know, uh, I've never really used 
3D Coat for that. I, I do use 3D Coat and I, I like it. I will say to me, of all the tools I use, it has the most obtuse interface and I have a, a hard time just using it as casually as I'd like to use it. Um, I know some people feel quite the opposite, so it's probably just me, but uh, I, um, I really like, um, I really like its its voxel sculpting stuff is impressive, but I use um, I use Substance Painter for my texturing, um, which hey maybe we'll use Substance Painter. I showed it on the stream like a year ago, but I haven't done any in a long time. I don't know that I have any special magic for using Substance Painter, um, but um, I do like it. There we go. So look at that. So why did those turn to spikes? Well, again, you know, I'm smoothing these out and the resolution's only so much there. So I like that I'm not making specific choices about um, how this looks in terms of those flow, because I'm going to go in and sculpt the hell out of it, right? This is just like, can we get something started? Um, and I want to also, I could show you another interesting thing, which is you don't even have to use these tools. You could just use primitives, really. So if you're not like, um, you know, if you don't want to make a bunch of complex mesh, um, or you don't want to use these add-ons, you can simply go in here and use primitives to do the similar sort of thing. So because um, this mesh already has some stuff going on with it, as in it's already got the modifiers, you can see over here, the voxel mesh it, I can just go in and kind of use, let's just quickly duplicate a few of these. Actually, you know what, we'll just add this here. So I'll just do a control J to join it. And you see it just kind of smoothed in, right? It's just there. So, um, you know, I can go in here and I can even, you know, you can even go ahead and select this one, which is your favorite, you know, control L, if you will, and then you can just sort of shift D these suckers around if you wanted to do more of them. And so we're not even, you can see how simple the modeling is at this point, right? Because this is not really a sculpting workflow. This is just like a, not even, I'm not even a kit bashing workflow. It's just like a blocking. But these tools like help, if you know you're going to do something organic, can get you a little, a little closer to it, right? Yeah. So yeah, let me know, Rebecca, if you are like, want to see some like character design or environment sketching, thumbnailing, um, any of that sort of stuff is also fun to do. I try, I generally, you know, I don't, I haven't done a lot on here because I figure there's probably other streams that are just that, that maybe people would be more into. So I, I'm trying to think about, well, what, what stuff could I show that maybe is a little different um, for you know, concept and a lot of art concept artists use 3D now, but I um, I guess I kind of like most people kind of have a specific workflow that they use over and over again. And I trying to like show a few different ways to kind of get, you know, similar results. So yeah. Yeah, the video um, is a uh, canvas thing is pretty it was fun. That was a fun stream. Yeah. And you're right. Like that was kind of one where I didn't have anything pre planned. And I just kind of was uh, winging it, um, you know, I kind of had like, we just sort of saw where it took us and we could totally do that again, um, uh, that type of thing again. Maybe, you know, maybe what we could do is, um, since we sort of did that in an environment thing, maybe we could do something similar where we, we do it with a, you know, a character or something like that. And I can just kind of develop the character in real time. It'd be fun, we could do that. Maybe what we could do, um, if we could maybe use that process for, um, for developing the characters uh, that we're going to use for this, um, you know, and I just have those real rough uh, images that you saw, and so we could do that as well. So you know, we could maybe spend some of the some of the next streams. So I'm going to just I copied it, and I'm just going to reattach it to itself, and it's going to revoxel it in there. And so now we have like a more complex shape, right? Which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. How does that sound? So we would take like, um, uh, yeah, let's see. Maybe we take talking with what Rebecca's talking about here. We could go into, so we could maybe like take, um, you know, take like these characters and the idea of them and just kind of like develop that in real time with the full character, you know? What, what am I cheating with? Hey, Golden Mooster. What did I cheat with? Are you one of those guys or gals who thinks art, they're cheating in art? Maybe there is, I don't know. You mean copying? <laughs> copying my own object and attaching it to itself? Let's turn it on. Let's 
turn on proportional editing a little bit. Look at that. <laughs> oh, you have no extent of the cheating. I'm not even, you know, the only sort of cheating I don't tend to do a lot of is, uh, is kit bashing. And it's not because I think there's anything wrong with kit bashing. I just don't tend to do it because, um, and I do sometimes, um, but I don't tend to do a lot of it just because uh, I, if I do it, I tend to kit bash my own objects. Speaking of which, I have some of those ready to kit bash with. Um, oh my gosh. So this object's getting pretty heavy. Look at that. So I created a floater, <laughs> if you will, uh, hanging out here. And uh, I'm going to leave it. That's an accident. I was going to put it in here, but you know what? It's out there. And I'm going to leave it. In fact, let's go ahead and exaggerate our floater. Well, if I can. There we go. So this thing is starting to slow down a bit. Oh, now it merged. Look at that. And it pulled the mesh with it. So we're going to leave that. I like that. We're going for some happy accidents here. All right. So I mentioned some of my own kit bashing. Let's see what we got. So um, there's this cool tool called KitOps, which um, is is for, uh, it has a lot of things. It does a lot of things. But for my stuff, I think I put, yeah. Um, let's see. Where did I put it? I thought I put some of my stuff in here. Maybe I got to add it. Where did I put it? Here we are, organic cables. Okay, so these are organic cables, these are cables I made. And these are, uh, not that we want really like a ton of cables, but one of the cool things about kit, about this tool, KitOps, is um, you can bring stuff in and I can say add the insert. And it'll add it in smart mode and it's constrained to the surface. I don't, you can't quite see it there because it's a little small. Let's undo that and uh, let's just go for large. Actually, let's go for bigger than large. And let's go ahead and add this insert. And you can see what it's doing is it's kind of like rotating in real time around the object. So I have a, like a library of my own stuff, my own stuff. Kit with a T. What would you, what'd you think? I don't, maybe I shouldn't ask what you thought I said. All right. Um, so I'm not necessarily going to add a lot of cables to this design. Um, but um, they, if I incorporate them into this guy, I say guy, this thing has no, no assigned gender, folks. All right, so if we add this here, we're just going to do that. And you see what happens. It kind of disappeared because uh, of my voxel settings. So let's undo that and let's try this. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of, um, get rid of all this detail there. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm going to attach, maybe I'll leave these separate for now. No, let's leave them separate for now. I kind of want to combine them, but um, I have to make them pretty big for them not to lose all fidelity, which is fine, because we're just trying to like get some weirdness going on here. Does this count as weirdness? Sure. Okay, so then we're going to duplicate our own work. Actually, let me pull in another one. So it, if you select your object, It'll, you can constrain it to it if you want automatically. Um, this is also another way you could bring in a whole lot of booleans and stuff if you wanted to. So um, I'm going to add this insert and you can see it once again, it's kind of constrained as I move around and then I'm going to make it big. We're going to rotate it. Again, we're kind of just like free rotating it. I'm not even really worrying about what my axes are. Just kind of shoving it in there. Something like that and maybe what we'll do is we'll grab this and again you can see this is crappy mesh right like this is not intended to be clean mesh um, but it's enough for this so I'm just trying to get a better flow into the ground with some of this before I combine it and this isn't a final ground plane or anything but get us a little bit closer that one looks pretty good for what I want and now I can um, I can cheat yet again I can duplicate my own mesh All right, so now let's see what happens if we can, can we find a way to merge all of this together? And it's really just for fun. I think this would be fine to take in ZBrush as is, but what if I, and actually, no, I keep changing my mind. What if I take this and scale it real big? And then I combine that with this. And then I voxel remesh it and we'll do it pretty fine and then we've kept it. Okay, so what um, what I did there is, oops, is 
you can see it kept the parts that I and kind of merge it together. And we could we could play with the smooth value if we wanted to be more merged. And since it's if we go into edit mode, it's still a separate object, so I could still easily just select this. Like if I just wanted to select only that, I could do that and move it around. Or if I just wanted to like, let's say I didn't want this part hanging out, I could just do this and just delete it, right? <clears throat> Oops, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, well, if you want to do a proper delete, it should probably go in the wireframe, but you just go in here and just delete it. Why am I? Uh, I keep misclicking. My computer's lagging a little bit. There we go. Uh, yeah. So, so you got rid of most of it. But I find those little weird things interesting. All right. So let's bring back everything. And I think I'll leave. I'll go ahead and leave. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave. Yeah, I don't know if I want to leave this one now. It's kind of it's just getting too nutty. Too nutty, guys. Too nutty. We should go into ZBrush soon. Cause I just, I guess, I just wanted to spend a little time in Blender because I don't spend a ton of time in it, and it's pretty cool. If you're interested in seeing this similar technique, I do have a video up on YouTube where I use this uh, a version of this technique to create a character from scratch, um, and um, it doesn't go through the final painting process, but it kind of it kind of goes over using some initial painting tools to get the idea and then um, it then goes into that. So this is going to create all sorts of messy stuff in ZBrush, this like little hangy out bit, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it so that we get some ideas. Mm, actually, you know what? I'm not, I like, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to make it too hard. <laughs> what I want to do though is, uh, I think, I think I want to, sorry, I'm just, whoa, look at that. Let's turn off proportional editing sound. The only problem with doing this sort of workflow is that you can see it does slow down. It can slow down quite a bit. But you do get a lot of happy accidents. So I'm just trying to get a little more, a little more, Je ne sais quoi. Right, we'll there we go. Mm -hmm. Sure. Why not? Why not? Okay. Um, but I do want, I do feel like I need a few more ridges in here that kind of follow this thing in a bigger way. So I'm going to go back into quick curve. We're going to go ahead and do first click as our depth. And we're going to make our brush nice and chunky. And I'm going to try and just Pull a shape out of here. Okay, something like that. And let me, um, there is a merge to active, which is cool. I should just have that on because that will actually just mean that it'll merge all these splines to one. So when I go to combine them with mesh, it's a little easier. And there we go. Get some weirdness. And I think, what if we did. Let's do surface for this. Who's that? Yeah. Look at that. That's crazy. If you go slower, it'll behave better normally. But <laughs> that's maybe a little too much. I don't think maybe I want quite that that much weirdness. So let's go back to first click. <laughs> There's just a lot going on. I could isolate these and it would be better behaved, but I don't think I need to do that for what we're doing here. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. The other thing I'd say, if it wasn't obvious, is don't be afraid to make a mess at this stage. I think a lot of people get really precious and are worried that, oh man, it's gonna look like I can't draw or sculpt and uh, aren't willing to do some messy shit. But um, I think it's great when you're looking for ideas. All right, we're gonna attach, let me convert these to mesh and then we'll just go ahead and attach that. And there we are. Okay, I'm gonna pull this down a little bit, assuming Blender lets me, assuming I click the right buttons, that is. And turn on proportional editing, and I'm just gonna kinda pull this down. Get a little more, a little more flow in there. Mm. 
previous this a bit. There we go. All right. This is this is beautiful, right, everyone? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is uh, I could keep going in here for a long time, but what I want to do is get to ZBrush and show some of those tools for exploring. But you can kind of see, okay, what did I? What, why do I have these up? What do I do? Well, I kind of took like the shape of that first one, and I started just putting in some of these like vine-like shapes there. It's obviously very primitive at this point, but um, there's really no replacement for going in and using the. Uh, the voxel, or sorry, the, the clay, the clay brush of ZBrush for this sort of stuff. So I just wanted to get a starting point. And actually, the more I look at this, the more I'm just going to delete these. I don't, I don't like them. I think they're just adding too much noise right now. Because I developed this further, and I think that's probably where the high frequency detail will be, is how it's rooted to the ground. And we'll try and go for a better read on the surface. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to name our sheet. Um, do I want to attach these? Sure, why not? Uh, well, let's um, let me just get rid of all these modifiers since we're not really using this for anything. I'll just go ahead and attach this so it's not going to merge in. We'll separate all this stuff and actually, so this is me mumbling to myself. I told you I was going to mumble a little bit. Uh, I'm actually just going to probably, all right, let's do this. Face, I name these things and I'm going to hide this and we're going to just attach these. I don't know what we'll do with them yet. And we'll call these uh, neck wires. What does high frequency detail mean? Um, well, in this case, high frequency detail uh, would refer to how sure you could say like how much detail within any given area. Um, but the important part as it relates to visual design is how much attention is it going to command? Um, and it tends to be, you know, if you have you know, the, sort of the old rule is that you kind of want small, medium, and large shapes in your design or area. Another way of thinking about it is areas for the eyes to rest. So if you look at like these designs here, you know, these are not entirely guided by human hands. So, um, you know, they're not really re doing that. And so when you look at something like this, it's cool, but your eyes don't know where to go. There's no like hierarchy to the read. And that's because it had a lot of the same size of detail. There's a few bigger areas, but it could, it could be a lot improved. Um, this one, it has some nice medium sized shapes in here, um, but these, these are underdeveloped, right? So um, this one, some cool big shapes and the high frequency detail would just be like these small sort of leathery texture, but it's pretty low contrast. So I think it doesn't steal too much of the attention. Um, so I think, uh, you know, these getting back to how it relates to this particular model, these are really, you know, attention getting, right? They're, a lot of little fine shapes. So if I put those wires all over the face, if I was trying to make a design that was all about that, like, oh, this thing is just dominated by high frequency detail, maybe maybe then you'd want to go after that. But otherwise, it's just uh, it's just taking too much of your attention. <laughs> you like the egg puns, do you? You got, you got some new ones for me? All right, so we're going to Yeah, I think, you know, um, so uh, there's there is kind of a um, a lot of the difference between artists who've maybe spent a lot of time, let's say, how should I say this? There, there's a difference between like drawing something well and making an image that is something that communicates uh, your ideas in an order you want. And of course, it's not a science in the sense that everyone's eyes see a little different thing. And there's there's a set of fundamentals and rules that all have like a million different connections. So it's not like one way to approach it, right? Um, so it's a little less of a science in that regard. But there are still those common techniques that artists use to help guide your eye. Um, and things that tend to be more satisfying, not always, but tend to be more satisfying for more people to look at. And so, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that is just something to always consider with your designs. So. Um, as I'm thinking about this design, um, you know, uh, the final image, I, I expect there to be like dudes on the ground that are getting ready to harvest and they're there to provide scale and context, but maybe they're not, maybe they're not cutting it. We don't know. I don't know yet, you know? Um, and then this thing, I want there eventually to be some sort of profile or silhouette or face read in here somewhere, but then I want to, I want to have these roots and stuff, uh, ultimately looking like 
it's um it's grown and the title plays on that a bit harvest even though some of these things in here may look inorganic or have a technology feel to them uh, so um, probably the hierarchy of read when I do the final image is probably going to be the face and then the detail will lead you down to the people harvesting it uh, around here and you know that's but this is super early it's just stuff that I always think about okay so what I'm gonna do now is export these three things so it's just the face those neck wires and this terrain and we're gonna export these so we can take them into ZBrush I'm gonna move this thing so we'll go ahead and there's a bunch of different things you could use we'll go ahead and use FBX uh, I'm going to just say um, selected objects and um, under geometry, I'm going to put face normals, which tends to be a better choice most of the time. That's probably all I need. So we're just going to call this like Oracle block in. All right, and we'll export it. <laughs> I'm glad that the, the chat has turned to puns and it had nothing to do with me. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that, everyone. Just take it over easy. All right, we're waiting for this to export. It'll take a little bit because we are exporting, it looks like about 800,000 faces or so, which will not be a big deal for ZBrush, but maybe a big deal for this. Okay, should be done now. Now, before I close Blender, uh, I'll go ahead and close Photoshop though. We don't need all, all these other images open. Um, I'll see, make sure my import actually works. All right, uh, this was just, this is nothing. So we'll go ahead, and there's a few ways you can import it. We'll go ahead and use the plugin. So we'll go ahead and use the import plugin. I think the default will be fine for this. So I'm gonna go to my Dropbox, my Dropbox. Goes everywhere I go. All right, we're gonna import this. Look at that, how quick that imported, okay? Uh, and there's our beautiful work. Um, it's not especially access aligned, uh, as you can see. Uh, I'm not planning on doing uh, a lot of work on symmetry, probably just not even care about it, I'll probably just model it from this view. That's uh, you know not what you do if you're gonna be a character folk. Um, but you'll notice that like each of those separate objects I exported came in as a subtool, named the thing I named them. So we can kind of just get started. So we're gonna go ahead and call this Oracle. All right, okay, so, um, so many millions of ways to use ZBrush. Um, I'm going to maybe start by, don't wanna start by doing that. I'm gonna turn off perspective mode for a minute. I'm just gonna do some trimming uh, so we're going to go ahead and do uh, trim. I'm just going to get rid of some crap we don't need. Um, I guess I'll just trim right. Sure, why not? Okay, yes, thank you for that. So I make sure we're on wires. Oh, maybe that's the head that we want. Yeah. And uh, I just go ahead and clip those out. We don't need them. They're going to be under the ground. Um, and oh, we could remesh this. Um, but what I'm going to do initially is uh, I'm just going to leave the mesh kind of sloppy and we're going to use our clay buildup uh, brush for most of this. I think is what we're going to do. I'm going to see what it's like. Yeah, it looks like it's probably enough for me to start roughing in these sort of things. Exactly. Oh, you folks. Okay. Uh, so what am I doing? I am. So one thing about, uh, I find uh, helpful, um, especially when you're kind of roughing in this sort of thing, is a lot of times I think you're tempted when you sculpt to just go with the flow. Uh, and by that I mean, uh, you see this as like a, a, a tubular sort of vein shape going that direction. And while it's faster to do this, um, I think you actually wind up getting something that feels a bit more organic if you often sculpt across the direction of the form perhaps at a lower opacity, and it takes you a little longer to build up those shapes. But when you're in this kind of rough stage, I mean, it's not worth worrying about too much at this point because I'm going to remesh this. 
Um, but it's still, I think it kind of winds up giving you um, a better starting point. Let's put it that way. Kind of gets a little less CG feeling. So I don't always do it, but I think for this one especially, which is going to have some interesting texture to it, I'm going to kind of kind of, kind of do that. Uh, all right. Um, I guess I should make some specific decisions here. So I do want I do want this thing. I did like in that sort of first thing of this kind of it wasn't quite an eye, but it kind of maybe almost like an ear, but it kind of I don't know kind of gave me that impression a little bit. So I want to preserve that in here a little bit. And I also like all the weird little holes that started happening with this thing. So I'm gonna just make sure that I'm exploring the holes. It sounded terrible. But um, just thinking about that, how I might incorporate that. And you know, I, I mean, I, I mentioned going to Unreal because I thought maybe a lot of people would want to see Unreal 5. Um, but I mean, the other path I could do is simply render this out of ZBrush and just get to painting. So if um, if you folks would rather see me do more painting, then I, we don't need to go through that. Like, I just thought it might be interesting to build an environment out of it. But, um, you know, it'd be a lot faster just to <laughs> sit together and paint. So I'm happy to do that as well. So we don't have to decide today, but if you have a preference, let me know. I'm curious to know what you'd like to see. Uh, I like this weird, like this middle one, these middle two have this kind of hard back plate over here. Um, so I could do a really simple, there's a, a million ways to do that sort of thing in ZBrush. Um, and I don't think I need to go to any insert sort of mesh type workflow. I think I, think I might just um, go ahead and do some simple masking. Yeah, so 3D to painting is in like, I'll, I'll work on the 3D side and then get to painting pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I find that interesting too because it's it's different, totally different goal for your 3D, right? Like your 3D isn't, um, isn't intended to be clean in any way. And some of the stuff you really work hard to avoid, <laughs> you sort of embrace. Like what I'm about to do here is like, okay, so I've masked off this area. And I'm just gonna simply move this, this stuff out. So uh, I'm going to go to the mask, unmask center, and then I'm just gonna like grab this thing, right? And this is like a terrible travesty to do in a lot of ways. If you were, you know, if you're really worrying about modeling, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna clean it up. It's not like it's gonna stay this, but this is like a terrible thing to do. Um, but it's great for what I'm doing. Okay. So now we have that. I can unmask if I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and chisel some of these forms off a little bit and um, trim dynamic is one of the ones I use a lot for because it respects curvature a bit as you're chiseling and I haven't used dynamesh or any form of remeshing yet actually let me just go ahead and hide this train for now because we don't need it right yet um, because also I'm you know we get a little bit of accidental help if you will from the resolution of this mesh um, you know we, we'll get like some shapes maybe we weren't totally planning on. And that's interesting. I'm actually gonna work bigger. Uh, now it looks like I have, um, it looks like I have a uh, Sculptress Pro on, which which I didn't even realize, which is why that pulled, that, that's right when I pulled that out, it looked a little cleaner than I thought it was gonna be. That's all right. Yeah, but um, it is fun just to do like really quick uh, mesh and get right to, right to it. It's 11 p.m. too late for dinner. Well, 11 p.m. last night for me, I was watching um, Brendan Cronenberg's Possessor and uh, drinking bourbon, so that was fine. And then I started watching uh, Holy Mountain after I finished that for like the hundredth time. So if I can do that at 11 p.m., you sure as hell can eat dinner. I'm very old and fragile, and that was no problem for me. So I'm right, gonna do this. Just trying to get some, you know, early on, even though this is super messy, just trying to get some planes in there. Planes as in, you know, it's not all squishy, right? As in we have some connection of these shapes. Now let's go back to our, my favorite brush. If I could only have one brush, it'd be clay buildup for this sort of work. Let's 
course now I'm going with the flow, right? Because I'm just trying to like get some initial gunk going over there. Just trying to connect these parts a little bit. I do like too how in that middle concept we have a little bit of flow going. Now if, if we're just going to go to to paint 2D on this thing, um, we have two options. Well, there are many options. There's two options. I uh, let's see what you guys. So let's just say we're gonna take, we're gonna sculpt this roughly, and we're gonna go, we're gonna render it out in some form, and then go paint it. So there's there's a few routes we could go. So the quickest route is just to do it right here in ZBrush, and that's a fine route, especially if you're, let's say, not worried as much about photorealism, um, because uh, ZBrush ZBrush is built in render is not really a physically based renderer. You can you can get semi realistic stuff out of it. But it's really great for just messing around and getting some exaggerated shapes and things like that. So we could go that route, and we could even then do a, a tiny bit of texturing and color work directly in here uh, using just the sort of poly paint mode. And so there's no UVs, no textures, and it'll just render out. So that's the fastest mode. So we could do that. Um, the other mode would be to export what we do here back to Blender um, and use EV, which is also quite fast. It's a real time render to do that sort of work and then render that out and go and paint on it. Um, so those are sort of like the two paths I would typically follow. There, there are many others, but if we're trying to want to get to painting quicker, um, we could do others. Does anyone have any mm, preference or want to see like, I want to see how you use ZBrushes rendering or blenders or whatever, man, just get to fucking painting. Now, um, one thing I do want to do in here, um, so if you go under, uh, one thing that's very helpful for this sort of sculpting is um, go under, oh gosh, get this out of the way. Go under here and go under um, preview AO and turn it on. And so um, this will, let's see if I turn off and on, can you see the difference there? It's very helpful for just understanding your forms. Um, I find you can even crank it up a bit. Um, Again, not the best if you're like sculpting a real final mesh because it might make it seem better looking than it is, but for our purposes, it's pretty helpful. Okay. Uh, so what I'm, my plan is this to do a little bit more, you know, like try to get the form a little bit better <laughs> than I have. This is just a, a holy mess at the moment, which is fine. Um, and then I'll probably, um, if you're gonna go, if we're gonna go and do a lot of painting, the quickest route to get some stuff that we could react to would also to be some ZBrush Alpha workflows. Um, so we'll do a little bit of that as well. As opposed to like spending time doing a lot of like really nice sculpting, which is fun. And sometimes I am guilty of spending way too much time on it just because I like modeling and sculpting as well as concept development. But if your goal is to get to concept, don't you don't really need much on the 3D model. A lot of it is about placement and lighting and composition that the benefits of 3D, I think. Um, versus like, I mean, if you're trying to get to real photo real hyper real and you really want to, you've got all your libraries of materials set up, it's great for that too. That's just not kind of what I'm doing here. Yeah, um, we could do some blender rendering for sure. So that would mean, yeah, we'll kind of like, we'll sculpt on this today. Let's see, what do we got? What time is it? How much time do we have? We have an hour, so we've got an hour left. So let's spend the next hour sculpting on this and I'll show you a few different things that are good for this workflow. And then next next session we'll start off, I'll have it in Blender waiting for us. So you don't have to watch me import mesh because uh, no, no real science to it, it just can be slow. And we'll set up scene and render. And I'll show you a few things that I do that make it a little easier on the Photoshop side. A little, you know, not I won't say automated, but a little faster to get anything in there. And the, the sort of render passes that I'd recommend using if you're gonna paint stuff, and then we'll paint. So um, yeah, we'll do that. And if anyone is really dying to see Unreal 5, we can go back to that at some point, uh, and it could be a different project too. But you know, I know uh, probably a bunch of you folks are more interested in the you know the drawing, painting side of things, and how 3D interfaces that versus like using a game engine to build a whole scene. Right? <laughs> it's a whole whole separate thing. <clears throat> Okay, it's interesting. I kind of reverse this. I like this how messy this got here, and I don't know. You know that sort of thing is like 
super easy to do in 2D and a little challenging to do in 3D to kind of pull the mesh apart. It is actually not hard in ZBrush, but um, that's those are some of the choices you make if you're just trying to be like efficient with your workflow. Like, where, where do I explore that? Do I explore it here? Do I kind of wait to do that in 2D? Uh, I guess the answer is I've done both. <laughs> so um, let's try, I'm gonna try something here. Let me get, so one of the things that ZBrush has is, um, <laughs> that's good that you have the idea going on. Well, thank you, thank you. Hopefully, um, you know, there's interesting conversation to be had as well. Um, one of the things that ZBrush has that's really cool, and uh, Blender has a, a very reasonable one as well, are cloth brushes. And um, of course, they can be used for much of what you think cloth, but they're also great for, um, get this back out of my way. Um, they're also great for um, creating weird fleshy like subjects, substances, subjects, idea, forms. So we're gonna do some of that in a minute. Uh, I'm just using the snake hook here, which is my favorite, uh, my favorite brush for just manipulating form. It's just basically like a move brush, how I'm using it here anyways, but it just has a little more, um, I'd say a little more expression to it than the move brush. Um, just my preference. So I'm just kind of trying to make these forms a little more appealing or interesting. I'm still going to sculpt them out some, but they're just a little generic right now. Not a good flow going through this, so I'm going to take this neck in a bit, pull this back out. I'm using pretty big brush loosely here. experimenting, see if I like the way this flows a little bit better or not. Ugh, you could just do some crazy, yeah, if you just, you could go, <laughs> thumbs up is fun just to like completely destroy your mesh to see what would happen. Um, let's see. Maybe a little lot too much. Right. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's baby, baby steps here, but I'm just trying to get, I don't know, a little more flow that I like. A little more organic feeling here. VR D and D is that a thing? So let's look at our mesh. Our mesh is really terrible. You see that now part of the reason you see this unevenly subdivided is we had what's called a Sculptor's Pro mode on. And Sculptor's Pro mode is great because let me turn on the wireframe here. Like instead of, if I pull this out, let me get a little bit bigger here. If I pull out this, you can see it sort of subdivides as I move. Um, it's based on the size of your brush. So if, even if I take this badly tessellated thing, you can see I'm just using a little quick snake hook there. Um, if I grab like, let's say the, um, oh, I don't know. Let's just grab the clay polish. Clay builder, brother. Um, you can kind of see it's just subdividing as I do that. So it's great if you're just gonna work really quick and loose and I uh, don't want to manage your topology at all. Um, it can really slow down <laughs> if you're not careful. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I want, but I'm not gonna use that right now. I want to grab I think I want to grab this area again. I want to kind of chisel this out a bit. Uh, let's let's go remove. That's interesting. Well, as you know, I enjoy doing a lot of stuff in VR. I haven't tried D&D in VR yet, though. What am I doing, you might ask? Well, I'm trying to just get a little bit more. Just want it to be a little. I'm going to I'm gonna dynamesh this in a minute. So I just want to get a little more of this going on. See how beautiful that is? <laughs> uh, yes. OK, so we could also do, let's do, since we know we're going to, um, since we know we're gonna dynamesh this. And so what dynamesh is gonna do is gonna like 
just reform the surface and it'll kind of effectively re reproject everything so it's going to weld anything just hanging out there. Why don't we grab, let's do a little bit of um, kit bashing. Thank you, Deidre. <laughs> Hopefully it's interesting, folks. I try and show an unedited, unlike, I feel like a lot of times when I watch streams, people have a very set process and it's really beautiful and amazing to watch how good they are at it. But I try and feel like I'm actually experimenting or doing some things that I don't do a lot. So hopefully you find that's also, it's a little more awkward, but hopefully you find that interesting. Um, I'm looking for, um, what am I looking for? Okay. We're going to grab this thing. So what is this thing? So uh, let me move this out of the way. So you can see I have, um, these are, these are things that I did not make. And these are just simple blocks that have been modeled. And so you can drag these out and they're just like separate meshes, okay? And so this is a, let's just call this a form of kit bashing. These are mesh insert brushes. And um, let's change the depth so that these are mostly embedded inside this guy, okay? So if I, if I just wanna add some, you know, I mentioned earlier I wanted to add some, um, uh, some tech in here. So um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and use these to quickly drag these out, and we're going to we're going to embed them in parts of this character. And when I remesh this character, you'll see they get merged in, and we won't, it won't look quite so stark. Um, if we wanted to keep them this stark, we could. Uh, and of course, once you have one out here, I could keep dragging them out, um, or you can just Control Drag and um, that'll copy anything that is unmasked in your current unmasked selection in ZBrush, which is, makes it a really fast way to just go and kind of like rough these things in here. All right. Again, this is crazy concept workflow, not how to make a beautiful mesh. That's fine. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Even ugly meshes need love, everyone. That's, that's the takeaway here. All right, so. And I'm the man to love ugly mesh. All right. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Ignore me. Too much to drink last night. All right. So, yeah, maybe maybe we'll drop one more down here a little bit, and I'll put it at more of an obtuse angle. All right. So just basic dragging and transforms. Okay. So we're done doing that. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So now we have this in there. And hey, that's kind of interesting, right? Let me save this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to merge all this, all this, these different pieces that together and make nice semi clean mesh. And it's still not going to be great. So we're going to use a function called DynaMesh. And so I'll try it initially. And you can see that the resolution is too low. So it kept all that stuff, but it's really low. So you got to bump this slider up. And it's kind of, it's kind of based on the internal scale of this object. So it's a little confusing at times. Uh, and again, now if I wanted to keep those things really clean, I wouldn't I wouldn't dynamesh them this way. But I don't want them really clean. I just want like some of that in there, and it's still a little too low. So I'm just kind of playing with where I want this. All right, that's pretty good. And this is not that heavy, right? This is yeah, it's actually really not heavy at all. So I could go a little higher. Let's let's try this. All right, so we're about 480,000 polys, which is not heavy at all. No mesh shaming. It's true. And let's go and use, so there's this, um, we have a couple options uh, that I tend to do. I want to I want to create some more planes in this. So we could try each polish or maybe trim smooth border. Um, and this is, you can see, I'm just kind of flattening some of this. I don't necessarily want all this detail in here. So I'm just, I'm just kind of picking some planes and flattening them. And I could do that on the organic parts as well. But we're just kind of, I have other plans for these sort of organic parts. But you see, I'm kind of merging them together and losing some of this detail. Because the point of this isn't going to be, look how detailed my Grebel block is, right? It's going to be on the overall character read. So I'm just kind of, let's try Trim Smooth Border, which is an interesting one that looks kind of as good at creating like cleaved rock-like shapes, if you will, your sculpt. Um, but it does, you can see it has a lot of unpredictability too, if you have these sort of like little convexities in there, little con rather concave areas in there. So um, again, I like happy accidents. Because when they go well, you'd be like, yeah, how did they ever think of that? And you're like, yeah, you know, pure genius. No accidents at all. I planned everything. I think a lot of a lot of creative work is just knowing, is just waiting for those to happen and reacting to them in a way without wiping them out. All right, so let's get some trim dynamic. 
get this back in here. Just trying to, all right, where are we gonna go next with this? So um, let me just carve a little bit more of the forms in, and then we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use some more sort of alpha-based workflows to get some organic elements in here without spending a lot of sculpting time. Since, since we've talked about, we're really just gonna get to painting sooner and not go through like Unreal and all that. We're just gonna kind of like get some really, let's call it rough mesh, and then we're going to go to Blender. So with that in mind, we're gonna take some shortcuts. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just sort of looking for areas I wanna emphasize a bit, and I'm just using uh, a very common brush in ZBrush called the Dam Standard, just to kind of cleave in these shapes a little bit more. And of course you can invert it and create raised areas. So if I wanted to create a little more uh, hot vein action, I could do that. Uh, yeah, obviously this is standing out a lot right now, but don't worry, we'll, we'll merge that in in a minute, make that feel more cogent with everything else. Um, what else do I want to do? I want, hmm. All right, let me just save this real quick. All right, so let's grab some alphas. So um, I will show you these. So, um, I'm gonna grab some skin or leather-like shapes. All right, so here's one. All right, so I'm gonna switch this to be a drag. So um, this is gonna let me, this is just you know a texture that's being arranged in a certain way, in this case, kind of along a line, and I'm just gonna use this to kind of create some kind of ridges around here. Like if you look at these original shapes, there are some interesting kind of ridges through a few of them. So I just wanna, I just wanna kind of you know, just see where it takes us a little bit. It may not be quite right for what I want here. Let me see what happens if I run some of these up. That, that that's working pretty well. All right. So you can see we're getting kind of like a bit more organic connection between here. And this is just using effectively using it's using a grayscale texture you could author in Photoshop or height extract a height map from another mesh just to kind of create these forms. So it's less sculpting and more, I mean, yeah. you can call it sculpting if you want, but all right. Uh, what is the other one I was thinking about? Maybe something a little bit more. Let's look in here for more. Let me go to, you know, I'm gonna look for an alpha here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna search my library of skin. Sounds terrible. Uh, what do we got here? Maybe, maybe something like this. Let's put this to drag rectangle. Oh, of course, the one place I have this. Oh, hey, the spam has arrived, everyone. Big follows. Yeah, so see what we're doing here is uh, this is just like a, a skin brush. And if we were doing this as real sculpting, you know, you definitely wouldn't want to be focusing on surface detail before we resolved kind of like all of our forms. <laughs> That's like how you get really bad ZBrush stuff is when people start adding surface detail before you've got your like major and minor forms all worked out. But again, we're doing this with a little expediency um, because we're gonna go, we're gonna do this, you know, our, our goal is to paint on top of this. And I don't, I don't need something super clean or great for that. So I'm just gonna, Kind of add this to add some interest here. See where it goes. What else do I want? What else do I want? Um, we could I'm just browsing my browsing my stuff. <clears throat> so um, just thinking about maybe. Maybe using some rocks here. Some kind of rock-like textures for some of this. See how that's kind of just blending that in there a little bit? It's nothing nothing big, but kind of just is starting to blend some of those together a little bit. Okay, see that you can see our reference on the right, kind of our influence and kind of where we're taking some of that. Um, I really want um, some crazier detached stuff up here. 
So um, we're going to save. I'm going to append just a simple sphere, but a simple sphere to this model. So we'll go ahead and append. This is the most frustrating thing in ZBrush is sliding over to a menu, all right, which is hilarious. So this is one that I was that had in the scene that like I was doing some simple sculpting on earlier. It wasn't anything big. So I've added it as a separate layer or what they would call a subtool in ZBrush. And we're just going to park it a little bit up here. And I'm just going to make a bunch of garbage um, because I want to have, I kind of want to, we're going to use some cloth brushes here in a minute. Well, that's interesting. So that was an accident. See, part of it was masked. And so when I moved it, it made that weird sharp shape. I don't want that, but otherwise that'd be really cool. Or I think that's what's going on. Why is that doing that? Oh, because sculpture's broke. Oh no, no, it's not on. I don't know. I don't know. Not sure why that's doing that, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, the sphere is a little less than simple, you know, but you're gonna, you're gonna make another, um, you're gonna make another egg joke, aren't you? Oh, because symmetry's on, that's why. Uh, which was not even set to local symmetry and it was just on by default. I didn't even intentionally put that there. Okay, so um, this is nice and low poly for the most part. So let's look at some cloth stuff. I gotta keep moving this thing out of the way. So uh, here, I'll cover up my face. Well, some of my face, you've seen enough of my face. So we're gonna grab um, a cloth hook, right? And so you can see what's happening here, right? It's trying to make cloth Right? And you can do cloth simulation in this and get pretty good results. But the cloth, the level of sort of wrinkles, if you will, um, is based on um, uh, the resolution of the mesh. So, you know, this is going to, because the mesh is relatively crunchy, we're going to get some weird shapes going on here. Um, obviously, if I'm not careful, we're going to make some inappropriate anatomy with the sphere. Uh, so we're going to, um, so what I'm just trying to do is just, Really, I'm trying to just make a mess. I just want to get something that looks kind of interesting. And then I can go to like the snake hook and pull it out. And my goal is just to kind of get some of these like weird shapes coming off the top of this. There aren't anything specific yet. Like we can decide in painting what they are. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to remesh these. And when I remesh them, let's turn on Sculptors Pro. When I remesh them, much like in, um, much like in Blender, like we can get some errors and some of this stuff can separate a bit, which is always kind of interesting, All right? So I'm just doing some garbage here now. Let's get out of this and let's go and dynamesh this and see if we can find a resolution that's interesting. Yeah, something like that, it's not bad. Um, mm -hmm. Then we go back to my... back to my brushes. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Which one should I use? Hmm. 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 What do we got here? I'm just seeing a real quick experiment if I, <laughs> what if I dynamish that? So we're starting to get some like crazy crazy stuff, which we're kind of losing that skin stuff that is interesting at the moment. However, let's see, now we've got a bunch of holes in this mesh now because of what I've done with the horrible things I just did to it, which is fine. And if I bring back, I'm just gonna, we're just experimenting, we're just experimenting. Let's go back to the cloth brush. What is the fucking cloth brush gonna do with this? It's having a field day trying to do something with it. There we go. Remesh again. See, each time I do, I'm getting more, more distortion going on, which, which in this case is great. My, for my purposes is great. <laughs> All right. So what I'm trying to like kind of evoke a little bit, see how the tops of some of these, these guys here have this kind of weird, almost like broken stuff. Like that's so much faster to do in paint, but I kind of wanted just to experiment a little bit with, with doing some of this, you know? <laughs> and, you know, I know it's a little, a little gross, 
but we can make it a little less gross when we paint if we want. And I'm just doing a, the cheater move again. Someone accused me of cheating earlier by copying my own stuff, so we're just kind of quickly copying this around. And I'm kind of blending in some of those hard shell shapes. I'm not sure how much I want to keep those, so I'm kind of kind of just pulling this in. There we go. We're getting some interesting results. And you can sort of see we're starting to get back to our little vision. Now, if you wanted to do, um, let me save this real quick. You can do, we could do a real quick like render here so you can see where the shadows are starting to lie on some of this stuff. Um, this isn't, you know, a great render, but just, just to give you a idea of where some of these things might be. All right, starting to get kind of somewhere in that space, right? We can start to see some of the, some of the things we were after. Let's focus a little bit on um, this lower area a little bit. Let's see if I can get that in a little bit better shape. shape. I must say shape. Better shape. All right, so we're gonna go to this, back to this here, and I'm just, um, and we can build up, you know, like we don't have to stay with this here. I can build this up better uh, as well, the terrain. It's very simple. I just want to, I think what I, thinking about is like I kind of want to pull this out a little bit and then you know make sure it's not too flat so I'm going to pull out towards the camera a little bit too this is a three-dimensional object after all it's always tempting just to work in silhouettes but it'll light better if it's not so flat all right maybe pull this out a little bit we're just kind of seeing how this looks and then we'll carve the ground we'll do a little bit of modeling on this the stone floor here or this terrain to kind of get it a little closer to where I want see I'm just deciding how much I like this because I kind of went in a different direction with this and it's maybe a little too distracting for the design so I might just um, I might just mask this Let's actually go to mask lasso. It's a little easier to use for this sort of thing. Let's get our mask lasso. I'm going to mask and I'm just going to delete this. So I'm going to invert that. I'm going to hide points and, and, and ZBrush so you then hit delete hidden because that's how you delete stuff in ZBrush because it's a weird program. And then I can redynamesh this if I want, which I just did. And you see it capped, capped those so we don't have any open holes. Um, not that it really mattered. But it also, since I pulled this stuff out here, it kind of gave us a little more resolution to work with. Uh, so um, this might not be a bad time to use curve brushes if we wanted to. Um, they have a couple of really standard ones I can show you. Uh, so like curve, I think it's probably curve to snap is about as simple as it gets. Um, or maybe I just want to use curve to, but I don't know, we'll see. So curve brushes, you can draw them out and they see they can form themselves to the mesh, right? And, and then you can move this around at this point. You can still move it around. You can move around the whole thing or parts of it. And you can see as I like move it around, it's trying to like <laughs> conform still. So this is, um, there are a few things that you can use to, con so now it's wrapping around. So you can get nutty with these. There's a lot, if you go under your stroke menu, um, you can uh, do, do here I was going to say this there's some relatively new functions I don't remember if they put them in a curve modifiers or move this down a little bit or if it's under modifiers or well we could turn on lazy mouse too which just smooths my input out a little bit so there's a bin start and bin end so if I swap swap that that means it's gonna keep it'll keep one side of it from not bending and the other side from bending so it's a little easier you can see how like if I grab that end, it doesn't bend and twirl around, but if I grab this end, it does, which makes it, it's a relatively new feature for ZBrush's curves. It makes it a little easier to position and control these things um, if you have something specific in mind. I don't really, I'm just kind of going nitty. Um, uh, I would absolutely use process like this f for production. And in fact, in video games and film, most concept art outside of feature animation style has already all gone to using 3D. Um, part of it is because um, 
it is actually quicker than drawing for most people if you're trying to achieve a high degree of realism because it just has a different curve. Like you'll spend more time on the model, but the way less time on the rendering, the sort of lighting and that sort of stuff. Also, if you're working on a project that you've worked that has a, like a bunch of, of things going on with it or like a bunch of similar things or similar in style to other stuff you've worked on, you probably have a library of things you can use as a starting point, um, which is true to some extent with 2D as well, but um, it it's a little harder. I'm just sort of deciding how I want this stuff to flow. I think this is a little bit big, so we'll lower this. Um, so for me, um, I, I do a mix. Like I still thumbnail a lot with uh, with drawing, and I do some concepts. Like I did I did a little bit of concept work on Psychonauts too, not much. Um, and I did, that was just all drawing. I didn't use 3D for that. Um, just because of the style of it and the stuff I was doing was pretty pretty limiting or limited. Um, but for, let's say, Rad, I did use 3D as a base for a bunch of it. Um, and that was, it was also partly because Rad, you know, had this sort of top-down view. And um, while you certainly can draw on that top-down view, it's definitely more time-consuming than using a top-down or sort of an above three quarter camera to kind of like understand what the game camera is going to see. So it felt appropriate. That being said, there was still a lot of painting done on top of it, you know? All right. So uh, I have these in here and you can see they're all chunky and, and weird, but now I can redynamesh them. And you see they're now integrated and they're still, you know, like I still could smooth them out if I really wanted to integrate them a bit better, but now they're just meshed like anything else. They're no longer these curves. And we sort of just use that to quickly get these, complex shapes going on, right? And that followed some of the mesh that we already had here. Uh, I'm just gonna pull some of these into shape. Um, I'd say the other advantage for, I mean, again, it's not, it's not that like they both, I just think they're just different tools. And I think as a artist, you should learn to use as many tools as possible within reason. Obviously, if it's not your interest or strength, then don't bother. There's more, you know, more than one ways to do it, but um, I would say that over the course of my career anyways, the demand for different types of art changes all the time. And if you'd like to remain gamefully employed, it can be helpful to have multiple skills. All right. Or at least open to learning new things, you know? Because you might, um, it might be the difference between being able to work on something you really want to and not, depending on what other people are doing on it. So. Uh, third level. Third level is in the first forest level, or uh, do you mean the third, the world three level? World three. Uh, do you think we'll ever get an art book or something like Rad or Headlander? Um, uh, I um, I uh, I don't know if if Double Fine would ever release an art book just for those projects, but I will say that. Um, we do have that 20th anniversary Double Fine art book coming out, and it has, there are a couple of pages devoted to um, Headlander and Rad and um, Stacking and, and, and some very, a lot of other Costume Quest, a lot of the other smaller games. So there is some stuff going on there that you might enjoy. <laughs> I think Hannah's a little biased. All right. She really likes Rad. All right. I'm just see, but I'm what I'm doing now too is is you know I'm not I'm not just sculpting. I'm searching for the design, so I'm using this as a design tool, um, and we'll continue to do more of the design when we get to um, um, the two D side of things, right? I'm not I'm not. Just sort of thinking about how these things are all going to fit in here. All right, we'll save this. All right, how are we looking here? Hmm. Not terrible. Um, I'm just debating whether I want to do some of the branch shapes in here or not. Um, I do have. I do have some stuff that we could import and use that I made for another thing. So let's just see if we have it. So here's like. Here's another thing you could like, why use 3D? 
Let's go see if I can find this for a second. So we're going to open another project. No, we're not going to save this because I just saved it. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know where I put it. I think I put it under Tree World. And brr, I don't know. Maybe this is it. OK. So here are some branches that I model for this. And you can see they're in here. So I can go ahead and like. I could copy them from here. I believe I could just kind of merge them down and copy them, or I could merge this project into the other one. Uh, let's just do a real, let's just grab some of these. Let's do a, um, and the nice thing, it, it's kind of like free art direction <laughs> to some extent, because if you're using uh, existing 3D objects you like for things that are in the same world, it's going to have um, a lot of the same sort of like uh, form language. So even though it's kit bashing and cheating, if you will, <laughs> I don't think it's cheating, but if you wanted to like think of it that way, all right, what do you, why is this hidden? I didn't hide you. Um, sorry, it's hard to do this. Oh, partially hidden. All right, we'll just delete hidden then. So what I'm doing here real quick is I'm just, I'm just grabbing a bunch of these, these little weird tree things, these little branches. And so what we have is we have like a, this so I just merge these into one tool. So I could um, I can just export this tool if we want. So I could basically say I could save this tool as. Actually, the question is, will it just save? Let's. Oh, what am I? What, where are my export options? I don't usually do this workflow. I'm just kind of curious what I have here. All right. Well, let's just to make sure. I'm gonna just. Um, we're just going to delete everything else, I think. We'll go here and we'll just say delete other. And now we'll go ahead and save this tool. And we'll move back to our current project, which is the Oracle. We'll just call these branches. Me too. Rad art book, please. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad. Anyone is interested in the rad look. Um, let me open this now. Okay, so we're gonna open this project back to where we are. And so now I'm going to go ahead and, and load that tool. So we're gonna, I guess there was a button load tools from projects. So I didn't even need to do this, but we're gonna, we did it. So here's our tool. They're obviously at a different scale. That's fine. We're gonna go to our face here. We're gonna pin those tools and they're right here. Uh, I guess actually they're probably smaller now that I'm thinking about. That's fine. Uh, and let's see where they wind up showing up. Are they tiny or big? I don't, I can't quite tell. I think they're humongous maybe? Or are they just hidden? Where? Sorry, sometimes uh, when you're doing concept mesh, this stuff's like way off in the world. But it doesn't seem like when I zoom out it, finding them. So what the hell is going on, folks? I don't know. Uh, let's go back here. I'm going to guess they're tiny, but we'll find out here. And why is it? Oh, I hate this. Sometimes I hate ZBrush, guys. I have to be honest. All right. Uh, let us... Okay. That seemed to do nothing. <sighs> All right, I don't fucking know. Uh, let's go to subtool. Let's go ahead and delete these. And yeah, fuck off. I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to, can I just unify these into Z standard ZBrush space? Will that work? Good. Where is that function? I normally, I normally never deal with this stuff, so I'm gonna be poking around a little bit. There is. Is that here? No, I think it's under, of course it wouldn't be here, right? There it is, unify. So now if I go into the sub tool, the other sub tool and add it, will that actually work? I might have to unify this as well. Uh, cause I made this huge cause I was, was working to scale cause I was thinking we were gonna go into Unreal. Uh, but let's see, or append it, will that work? Nope, it didn't work. 
There, okay, look at that. I undid it and now they show up. How the hell do I know what happened there, folks? This is why I hate ZBrush sometimes. It's a little flaky on these. Great at sculpting, I think unmatched brush fill, but scene management kind of sucks. All right, here we are. So this gets some of these cool branch-like shapes that are right there. Um, and we're doing some happy accidents here because obviously I didn't lay these out. These are just from the other thing. I didn't lay them out with a specific intent to match this. So I'm just kind of seeing what happens if I kind of rotate some of these around. Let's see if I can get a little closer maybe to that. Uh-oh. <laughs> What's Jeremy hyping about? All right. This thing, maybe, maybe I like this. Maybe, I don't know. I just don't want it to look too much like a mohawk. As, as much as it hurts me to say that. All right, I think what I'll do at this point is I think these are all going to be separate. We'll take a look here. I think they're all going to be separate. Oops, wrong button. Separate poly groups. They are. Well, mostly. So that is great. So now I can kind of just go in and uh, yeah, undo fixed it. Yeah. I don't know why, man. I don't know why undo should have fixed that, but it did. I think it was just not displaying and it was it, it needed to somehow be force refreshed. All right, uh, so uh, if, uh, if you control shift on stuff within a single subtool that has different poly groups, it auto masks them out when you're in move mode. So you can quickly, quickly just kind of move these around quickly for ZBrush anyways. All right, and then, you know, individually scale them or whatever else. So I'm gonna move some of these. so They're not all just floating completely out in space. But we're getting so this is like a you know um because uh getting back to why well, i use 3d for concept well i had these sitting around and so now um <laughs> other than my excursion with error like it's much quicker for me to use these and it's not it's not the same as we're using a layer in photoshop because those are drawn from a specific angle right but whereas these i can kind of rotate them into the viewpoint that i want them and they're not really even going to directly resemble what they did before and no one will know and you've just sped up your workflow so it's one of the advantages all right, but I think if you're also searching for designs, there's a lot of like, um, and there's a lot of things you can do in Photoshop and in 2D as well to encourage sort of happy accents. I have a little video on that if anyone wants to watch it up on YouTube, but there's um, there's also, um, I don't know, I think 3D really lends itself to that. Uh, what do I want with this guy? Ooh, look at that. I had something mask and it got a little crazy. So I think what we're seeing there is, yeah, so that is probably because um, there's a different poly group on that little tip. So I think that's gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna unmask this and then I'm gonna hit Control W, which will, should mask or not. Okay, uh, let's do that again. All right, this unmask this and then we're going to go to poly groups bump bump and we're going to auto groups i should have just done a group visible i should work anyways all right there we go all right getting back to where were we where were we after you watch me remember how to do this very specific thing in zbrush i never do all right bigger it's going pretty cool this does not feel appropriate there though so let's see if it will get us a better silhouette somewhere what if we um, with this area that we already had poking out here which as you remember was a bit of a happy accident um, what if we kind of have it manifest in some sort of branch as it pokes out
Okay, something like that. And of course, I can still sculpt on all these things, right? I'm just trying to just trying to get them into place. Like that's pretty interesting, maybe. Uh, but do. Um, okay, we've got a few more pieces to place, and then we're done with this part of it. All right. I kind of want to. I kind of add more fleshy sack-like stuff to the um, the base sculpt. Too. So I might go back with some cloth brushes here in just a minute. Fleshy sack stuff. Let's try. It. I'm not. I don't want it to be too gross. Like I. I don't. I don't really. I don't know. To me, there's a difference between like. Uh, I don't really draw like bloody viscera stuff. I like things that are maybe let's let's just say a little unsettling, but still evocative and beautiful. Not gross. But everyone's uh, everyone's line for that is different. Admittedly, my Line is probably different than most human beings, but all right. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's get this center. And also keep in mind that you can control drag when you're in this mode just to duplicate it. So if you find a shape that you really like when you're in this process, you can quickly kind of pull it down. Reset the orientation, holding down the Alt key so it doesn't rotate the object. And then there we go. All right, how's that looking? Uh, I think this one I can probably just delete, delete hidden. All right, let's do super quick crappy render. All right, um, yeah, not terrible. Uh, let's um, save this. We spend a tiny bit of time on the um, train itself. So grab our yield snake hook brush, which Mr. Um, Jeremy always tweets, uh, teases me about. My crutch. All right. so I just want to pull this up a bit. And we could do some sculpting, I don't know if we want, but I don't need to spend too much time on terrain. It's not that important to this piece. And indeed, I might change a lot of it when I get to painting the background, so. Now, if we wanted to give ourselves a head start uh, on this, we could, a uh, head start on the final image, um, we could just duplicate this train. So you can go into your subtool there and just duplicate it. And then let's just go and don't, I was about to say, don't underestimate the power of yanking. Uh, and that is true, but what I meant was copying and moving really quickly so that you can, you know, because if, if you're working in 3D, um, it doesn't take very much alteration of these things to not look like a copy at all, especially if you're gonna go back in and do some painting later. Get this thing out of my way, it's in my way again. So I'm just, and we're not really even in perspective mode here, so let's go to our perspective mode. Um, And I'm just now we could merge these in and I could sculpt across them if I wanted to, but really there's no point for how we're gonna use this. I think I want all these lines, I want all the shapes to kind of one of the one of the ways I'm gonna control the eye is I'm gonna use like all these sort of secondary shapes are gonna kind of flow up towards the head. So I'm trying to position this uh, angle right here so there's some nice flow up towards the head shape. So I'm gonna use a very big snake hook brush and just kind of modify this terrain to have that flow. We're gonna wind up deleting this stuff over here, but we're just gonna use that as a, a starting point and keeping angles to keep it a little dynamic because this is a pretty static image otherwise. 
Um, okay, so now what I'll do to keep those is let's just go and, um, well, we could we could trim out certain areas. There's a lot of ways you could do it. We could just simply start like grabbing things. We'll just like mask these things out. We know we don't need like this. Let's see how that's gonna work. Yeah, maybe mask a little bit more. And then we'll invert it. And then we're just gonna hide those points and then we'll delete hidden. And so now we kind of just, you know, there's a little bit of extra buffer if I, if I wanna move it around a bit. Um, later and of course like i said we could always keep sculpting on it but i'm just i'm just going to get it into place here it's not really about detail as much as it about the flow make this a little smaller pull these down i don't think you'll see it anyways but just because do do do, do, do. oh man we are almost we're getting close to being on time. I got a few more things obviously I'd like to do on this sculpt, but since our goal is to get to painting pretty quickly, what I'll what I'll do is I'll probably noodle it a bit during the week. Hopefully I have time this week just to get it a little further along. Um, I don't, like you could totally go to paint at this point. I just wanted to experiment with a few other things. And um, then we'll just go into a more, we'll get in the blender and then we'll kind of like approach it with a more, you know, 2D centric painting workflow from there. So. Uh, keep it pretty light on the technical side. I think also maybe I want to pull this thing out a bit more. So if you have any questions, comments, diatribes, whatever that you want to do, you've got a few minutes here to ask questions or suggestions or reaction, you know, whatever, whatever. Anything, fellas, ladies, everyone. All right. This here. I think if this neck gets too thin, it starts to look a little derpy. But I, uh, so I think I need to build some other forms that come a little further out on this. Um, so maybe this is a good time for some more flesh, flesh sack. So what we'll do, let me see this. So we'll append a, a sphere. Totally a spin, a, append a sphere, dude. Whoa, that is a buku large sphere. Let me zoom back here. Let's scale this. Favorite thing in a quick lunch sandwich. Now, that's not one of those British terms that means something else that I'm not aware of as an American, is it? Um, well, um, I like avocado. Um, I don't know. Quick, probably, probably some form. If it's meat, if I'm going to eat meat, it'll be some form of pork, probably, or chicken. But I like veggie stuff, too. And it'd be probably hummus or avocado. I try not to eat too much bread, but which is hard because bread is uh, one of those glorious things that the creator put on the planet to punish us, All right? Because it's too delicious. So I'm just gonna pull, you see how quickly I just can use this random spear shape to kind of pull out and give us a little more girth coming down here. And then I'll, what I'll do is um, I will use, in but a moment, I will use the cloth brush. Marmite. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Uh, Marmite. So Marmite is, is largely not a thing in the States. However, um, I like Marmite, but I don't love Marmite. And I know most people either hate it or love it. And I'm kind of like, you know what, like if I'm having something like it's good on toast with some butter, but see that is like a, that is like a super, uh, that I would just balloon up if I ate that every day. All right, I'm not one of those naturally thin human beings. I balloon up very easily. All right, um, what am I gonna do here? I'm going to, you know, let's get a little more. One more resolution there. Your dinner was bread. Okay. Um, 
Dinner of Kings. Sure, there's the Plowmans, right? Cheese and bread. Um, you know, one sort of bread that I, I like in the UK that uh, that you cannot get here at all is granary bread. You cannot get malted. You can even get malted flour in the States to make it. So. to see if I can pull this out here a little bit and then soon it'll be time for the flesh brush as our as our last act symmetry with symmetry on now uh, yes fresh bread is the shit actually I have a theory about that like okay baked stuff is great but also if if you bake like cardboard and it's fresh out of the oven, it's just, it's also delicious. You're like, this bauxite is rather good just because it comes out of the oven and it smells. And even if it's totally uh, lackluster in other regards, once it cools, when it's fresh out of the oven, it is amazing. Okay, so now let's get, actually I'm gonna use the snake hook a bit just to pull this into this canyon crevicey thing a bit more. Well, I'm going to try. Maybe something kind of like that. I'm going to probably want to remesh this. I guess I could be smart and just use Sculptors Pro for this. Real ass butter. I don't know that I've ever had ass butter, but to each their own. Right. Put this here. Maybe curl this around a bit. How much do I want this to go up there? I don't know. I don't know. Let's try that. Something like that. And let us let us turn off this and we'll dynamesh it. Let's turn I'm gonna turn on my wire frame just so I can kind of see what it's gonna look like. That's not high enough res for what we're gonna do. Well actually, you know what? Mm, no, not. It's probably good enough. Let's see. Let's grab the cloth hook, also known as the fleshinator. <laughs> uh, I really I grew up eating rice all every day so I am more I have a lot of a nostalgia and desire to eat lots of rice as well which has similar dietary issues all right but it is good Hey, Hannah just had a birthday, everyone. So say happy birthday to Hannah. There we go. Look at that. See how, like, I mean, obviously this isn't perfect, right? Like if I was going for a specific look, but it is kind of cool and weird and is a little like wood and, you know, a little not like wood. It's just kind of a fun way to see what you'll get because I can easily correct anything I don't like and paint, you know? So, having rice before 4 p.m. Yeah, man, it's great for breakfast too. Well, you know, we had lots of strange stuff in Hawaii. Strange by most American diets, all right. It's kind of interesting. Hmm. Now I want to get in here. I want to use the, the cloth brush in this, but you see it's not really working here. And that's because this is part of this huge thing and it's too many polys for the cloth brush to evaluate. 
so it just doesn't do the job. I could easily separate these if I want to get a little more of, of that in there, um, which uh, I won't do now because we're getting very close to uh, to the end of the session, but um, I will probably do that. Um, and that's a nice thing to do about concept mesh. You don't really care about every, you know, the, the thing being perfectly smooth. So yeah, we made some decent progress today. I would say not bad for two hours. Um, obviously, if I wasn't running my mouth, it probably would be a lot faster. But um, this is a perfectly reasonable start for something or, you know, something that you could easily just do a little bit of lighting out and go and paint. But I will probably, like I said, develop it a little bit more because I could see some easy wins that I would like to would like to do on it. Um, but I'll, I'll review those at the start of next session and then we'll be doing some blender things. Um, and I think that's probably it for today. So thank you for uh, joining me on this strange workflow for getting some, uh, you know, where we used uh, machine learning uh, and drawing and now uh, 3D and a couple of different tools. And we're gonna eventually wind up painting again. So it's just kind of fun to see how things uh, transform there. Uh, giant test score, wow. Wow, I'm not sure. I don't really want to say kink shame you or judge your dating life, but um, you know, I think maybe you might want to talk to your partner about seeing a doctor. Um, so anyways, um, with that, uh, thank you all for stopping by and I will see you next Sunday uh, for the next step in the process. Bye everybody.